Hey, what's up guys? I'm Bright Torn and welcome back to Victoria 3, Voice of the People. So since today is episode 5, so we're a few videos into the series, uh, some of you guys may know there's a bit of controversy uh, with this current DLC. It's very lowly reviewed on Steam. Yeah, the reviews have not been all that favorable. I had a few people ask me about the DLC and my thoughts about uh, this and, and the patch. And so at the end of this episode, I'm going to briefly just address some of that uh, for those of you who are curious. Let's go ahead and start out today by setting up an alliance with the Spanish. They will greet that. So I want to ally with Russia. But of course, they already have been ally in Austria. And we don't know how long that alliance will last. That could last the rest of the game. Who knows? And so... Rather than sitting around waiting in order to establish an alliance, I think it'd be better to instead ally with the Spanish. The Americans would have been another uh, alliance option here, but they would not accept it. They're pretty far away from accepting. So even if we were to offer an obligation, that would not be enough. But the Americans would have been another choice. And what's interesting about the United States right now is they're currently led by President Robert Lee. So yes, Robert Lee from the uh, Confederate States. Remember, they already had the Civil War here. It was the North that left the Union this time, and I believe they lost that. So I'm not sure how exactly the laws all changed here. But yeah, it's it's an interesting situation. Uh, so yeah, let's go and get the alliance with Spain, which they accepted, because we're going to need that based on what we're going to be doing here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and finally make a move in Europe. So thus far we've been focusing on North Africa. Uh, now I think it's time to finally make a move in Europe. We can we still can't really contend with the British in the sea. Even with the, the help of the Spanish, that's 103 ships of our own, and then the Spanish have 49 ships. So even then we'd still be outnumbered by the British. Now we are building our fleet up. I think we should have 120 by the time we get it fully built up. But yeah, we still need to work on the Navy. But maybe they won't get involved in this. Now, if we were to go after the Belgians, then they absolutely would get involved. Now, that would be one option here uh, because the Belgians have a defensive pact with the British. I also have a, a trade agreement with them. And they are rivals with the Dutch. And we'd have to fight the Dutch if we wanted to instead conquer Luxembourg since they're in a personal union with the Netherlands. Now, if we look at... Sardinia Piedmont, on the other hand, they do not have any allies. And the issue here is that our relationship is too high with them. And so what we need to do is go ahead and begin to damage relations. So we can try and get their opinion a bit lower so that we can finally make use of some, some plays against them. So we're going to try and conquer this territory here. Since, you know, we can't do it the historical way where we help the Italians out. Oh, look at that. The British are not happy about this. Well, I guess they wouldn't really care. That I was, I don't know, maybe they would care. I don't know how the AI, you know, responds to your actions like this, you know, when it's not actually uh, doing a diplomatic play. Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't care about this. I don't know. But as we work on that, we also need to continue to work on any issues that we have here. We might just set up trade for these. We're currently building things here. You know what? Let's let's go ahead and set up trade for anything that's kind of expensive in our market. So tools and artillery seem to be the two most expensive things. Uh, I don't think we'll we'll trade for artillery right now, uh, but tools, on the other hand, we always need those. We've been building, but uh, clearly not meeting the demand right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and see if there's any trade routes that be productive. There are not. It's just not. Prices just aren't bad enough in our market and just aren't good enough in other people's markets, so we can't do that. Okay, if we go to war, we could try looking for uh, an artillery trade deal. Now, I'm not entirely sure where the relations need to be for us to be able to do a diplomatic play. They just need to be less than cordial. I'm not entirely sure where that, where that is. I don't know what it says here. But yeah, we just need to wait for that to, to take down. We did get the mutual funds, so that's more minting, so that'll help us 
with our income. Uh, we, we're actually doing pretty good because we got a good gold reserve. But yeah, we were in the negative there for a minute. Uh, but then also we can do the, the publicly traded. Do you want to do this though? Because it results in more capitalists. Well, the main reason why we got this besides the minting is for the commercialized agriculture. So that's what we're gonna work on. Uh, though we'll take a look at this event first, the Contagious Diseases Act. So the Catholic Church in Rome, led by Celestin Goner, are demanding that the government take a stance on prostitution. They request the enforcement of laws that allow police to detain women suspected to be in prostitutes in lock hospitals on the grounds that they spread venereal diseases. All right, so we're trying to stop the spread of STDs, uh, or at least that's what the Catholic Church is saying the point of this is. Or we'll use that to suppress prostitution, I suppose. And so this would decrease the standard of living for the lower strata. But this would increase the approval of the Catholic Church, get them up to the next level. But we've seen that kind of has been flip-flopping back and forth. Or you say these laws are inhumane. Well, given Napoleon and his treatment of women, I feel like he would probably go with this one here. I know he's very conservative and supportive of the Catholic Church, but uh, yeah, I don't know if we'd do this one. So we'll just take the hit with the Catholic Church. Uh, and also, we need to select a new tech and then get that law started as well. So we're working on level three techs at this point. And so production-wise, you know, there's, there's a lot of good options, but I feel like we really need to boost our military. And maybe one way to help us out in the seas is just to you know, focus on quality. So maybe we'll do that. Of course, you could boost your, your army, which I guess that's the key to winning any war. So maybe we should do that. Instead, focus on the army one. Not this one, but this one here, breach load. And that would actually improve the troops. So this one's only gonna improve your, your arms industries. So we'll get the breach loading. And then our law needs to be enacted. And so that's gonna be in land reform, commercialized agriculture. So you see that the landowners do oppose this change. And so this is gonna result in them going from 11 to three on opinion. So luckily we have a high opinion with them. But it is gonna please both the rural folk and the industrialists. So that's gonna get this started. 20% chance of enactment. And so yeah, we see we lose the landowner's bonuses. Yeah, both of those. But gain the rural folk bonus. And they also are gonna leave that because they're happy about us passing this law. Okay, so yeah, we'll work on this. And that, of course, we look at what that actually is gonna do here. Oh, and we finished that. All right, excellent. So we completed both of those. Uh, so we'll take a look at that in a minute. The key here is that we're reducing the uh, landowner's political strength and also unlocks new production methods and stuff. But uh, uh, that's really the key is that we're going to reduce their power. And that's one of our goals here. So we finished up the cementing the House of Bonaparte. So we got the Eternal House of Bonaparte event. The Bonaparte dynasty has tightened its grip on the French crown to the point that no other claimants pose a serious challenge to its monarchist credentials any longer. And so there's been a lot of criticism about this mechanic, just how easy it is to use. You basically just pick which house, as you guys saw in the early episodes, you just pick which of the three monarchists uh, claimants you wanna support, and then get at least one interest group leader to support you, and then that's it. Then it's just a matter of waiting, and then it will succeed, and you'll, you'll, uh, you'll get whatever house you want in power, and then they'll just take power. And it doesn't even tell you what happens to the previous monarch. Were they depo deposed? Like, wh what exactly happened there? And so it really doesn't replicate history. You know, we talked about this already in the series and what happened with Bonaparte. You know, he tried to do two different coups and they both failed. Now, the only way he actually got power was after the king had already been, well, he wasn't even deposed. He abdicated. And then uh, they created a presidential republic and there's elections. And then, you know, Bonaparte came in and ran for election. Well, he didn't run for the initial elections, uh, but eventually he, he came in, ran in the elections, and won. And then he seized power once he was already the president. And so it was a very uh, difficult uh, situation. It, it was not uh, easy for Bonaparte to come to power. 
and definitely isn't replicated in this game with these mechanics. So there's been a lot of criticism with this mechanic, how easy it is. And Paradox has responded to that and said that they're going to change it and make it more difficult, make it more challenging, and have a bit more resistance to it. So I'm interested to see how they change it. Their options here are Louis Napoleon Bonaparte is without peer. No other dynasty will ever challenge ruling dynasty again. I don't know if that means that there can't be another dynasty in France. I'm not entirely sure how that works. Uh, but this results in him getting this modifier here that increases legitimacy and popularity. He's already incredibly popular. He's absolutely loved. I uh, remember the, the effects of popularity are based off of the role. So for the ruler, it increases your authority. So you can see we're getting 110. And so by boosting it further, we're going to get more authority. So that's always helpful. And then the legitimacy, that's great too. Uh, you could instead say the supporters of the Bonaparte dynasty deserve all the praise. And so basically, if they have that, uh, you know, that, that character trait, the character ideology, I guess is what it's it's called. But yeah, it's only those two that currently have it. The bourgeoisie, that's the Bonapartist one, uh, and the armed forces. And so those ones would get interest group, political strength, and pomp attraction. I mean, that would be helpful, but clearly not as good as this one. So this is the one we're going to go for. And either way, you get that no other dynasty will ever challenge the ruling dynasty again. All right, excellent. So we finished that up. We got our law being worked on. And it's uh, one that's not as controversial as going with autocracy. And so we didn't piss everybody off doing this one. Uh, we had a scandal in the Catholic Church. So we can force this politician here to step down. Or we say ignore it and he'll lose popularity so the Catholic Church will become less popular. So we don't really want that. And so let's just... I mean, he's already not very popular. Let's just force him to step down. And it looks like the play here... Oh, okay. So I was thinking this was the, the one they were doing against here in the uh, Arabian Peninsula, but they already succeeded in that. And the Ottomans aren't stopping. They're just continuing... I mean, their infamy is only 14.7. And we knew this was going to start conflict with the British. And so this would be a perfect time for our war here in Italy. It's such a bummer that we're stuck waiting. Because, yeah, the I almost want to support this, actually. To make sure the Ottomans succeed here. Because I want the British out of Egypt. And there's a good chance the British win this. I mean, the Ottomans feel confident, but I don't feel confident for them. I mean, they do have a lot of battalions, though. They outnumber the British, and they only have to seize Egypt. Maybe they can win this without any assistance. Maybe we should just let the Ottomans and the British fight each other. I guess it depends on what the British set for their war goal. Alright, so they would want Wallachia. So we don't really want the British in the Balkans, though that does step on the toes of both the Austrians and the Russians, so maybe that causes conflict with them. This might not be a horrible thing. Yeah, they're trying to get control of both Middle and Upper Egypt. Let's see what happens there. It could go either way, guys. It is really hard to say. Egyptians don't have a lot of troops. British are now outnumbered. Of course, they'll have control of the seas, but that's not going to win you the war. The British are going to start conscription, though, so that's something to consider. 111 battalions here. The British have 93 and so they did sign that peace agreement in East Africa. But yeah, a fantastic time for us to go to war. But yeah, we'll just see what happens here and whether we want to get involved or not. As of right now, I think we don't need to. Though the Ottomans aren't mobilizing enough troops. They're worried. What did they think was going to happen here? The British are going to give up Egypt? Hmm. Maybe somebody will help out there. This is what we're going to do. You see the, the Belgians already trending towards helping the British. The Austrians in the middle here. I just show our interest in helping the Ottomans. I'm not going to join for nothing. They need to offer me something. So popular outreach. So this Felix character, he's an agitator. Okay, so he wants to support this movement, which we do not want to enact. 
He's embarked upon a week-long tour of the countryside to spread awareness of the need for commercial commercialized agriculture among the rural folks. So he's actually going to help us with the law we're working on, though. And so we say a noble cause, and with luck, a popular one as well. Increasing enactment success chance and improving the approval with the rural folk. Or say, why care for an outsider who offers nothing but words? Yeah, we'll go with this one. If he uh, does become an agitator, comes to our realm, we can just uh, kick him out. And Austria sided with Great Britain. What? Wow. All right, so now the Ottomans are in trouble. Yeah, they're in trouble now. They have very little chance of winning this now the Austrians have got involved. They have mobilized a lot of troops now. They need somebody to assist them, and there's just nobody else to get involved at this point, except for us. But I'm not doing it for free. This is going to be a costly war. They need to, to offer me something. I prefer to just wait while they're fighting, and then hopefully we can start our, our war with the Italians. Again, I'm not entirely sure what we have to get the relations down to. You'd assume there's a way to, to see that. Let me see if I hover over this. Does this tell me no? Hmm. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure where we have to get it down. Maybe if you hover over cordial? No, that doesn't tell you either. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to see where we had to get that. In order to be able to uh, get it to the next level so we can declare war. So. Total top-down management. The industrialists have taken an interest in commercialized agriculture. Many industry leaders hope to secure the entire supply chain for the companies. So we say middle managers will be a thing of the past. This will increase the approval of industrialists and the enactment success chance. Uh, we said, instead say the workers will need additional protections. Trade unions would approve this. Industrialists wouldn't. And you get the 10% instead of 15%. Or an interesting proposal we're taking it. Of course, there's no actual effects here besides these here. So it's not like they're actually going to give additional protections. Uh, but this option here would increase the ena enactment success chance by 10%, irritate the industrialist by a lot more than this one would. Uh, and we'd also get a point ten command economy pop support. That's interesting. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, we're just gonna go with this one here. Just get the success chance up, and we'll appease the the industrialists. Uh, so let's go and get some more construction going. Uh, we're doing good on money here. Yeah, we could of course pass that down to our pops by reducing our taxes or something, but that's not what we're gonna do. <laughs> Instead, we're gonna to continue to build up our military guys. Um, so let's work on. The British military is more powerful than I'd like to see. So let's build a few more barracks and then go back to working on the fleet. Um, so let me just see where we're currently at here. So we have 90 here in this one and 75 in this one. And only 15 here, but that's just that region right there. So I think we're gonna build here. Yeah, we'll build here. In our northern location, get some more in the capital, and also just kind of building these locations that don't have any, and this would be a way to improve their uh, standard living here. So we're gonna do 10 in both of these locations, and then 20 in the capital. And then we see where we're at again. So that gets you up to, to 293. So let's get seven more, and we're just gonna build that here in the Ryan HQ. Why not? So we wanted to get seven more. That's a good defense as well. If uh, we were to be attacked on that side. Uh, we wouldn't have to raise them up. They'd just be, you know, defenders there. All right, so with that being worked on, let's now do the fleet. We're still trying to build them up. Uh, remember, this gets up to, I believe it's 120. is where we should be at. We're going to do 20 here in the France HQ, five here and then one down here, just to get them up to five. All right, and then we'll put, um, let's see where we want to, it looks like they're all kind of spread out, so let's just do one here. And then we want to do five down here. And so let's do those, we'll do these here. So do five there, and then the other 20 
that we want are going to be up here. So they're all kind of together. Now we cannot expand there, but we can expand here. Okay, just looking at the uh, the workers that we currently have there. All right, so let's go ahead and do five in Normandy, five here, and ten here. All right, excellent. So I just continue to invest in our military right now, since you know we're looking at doing wars and stuff. Uh, and another conflict. Okay, so. What happened? Did the war break out? The war just broke out. Okay. Yeah, I noticed that disappeared. I didn't even see that starting. But yeah, there's also a conflict here that I'm not really in, invested in at all. So we're just going to declare a neutrality for that one. And the United States wants to enter a trade agreement. They'd be a fantastic trade partner, so why not? I mean, there are, of course, reasons why you might not want to. But yeah, we'll do, we'll do that. And then... They're going to have wars on multiple fronts here. Because you got this one here, this one here, and then the one against Austria. And you can see it does look like the Ottomans are going to lose at least two of these. So not a good situation for the Ottomans, which is a bummer. Because yeah, we're not even able to capitalize on that right now. Uh, so we got some event about a campaign here where they commercialize agriculture. So if we went with this option here, we're going to improve the chances of getting that passed and make it faster. Uh, but then we get this modifier here. So might not want to do that. It kind of just depends on the situation. It improves a little strength from wealth. Hmm. Well, specifically in the capital. Or you could say vast sums of money flowing into politics, you say. And so basically, all the the bonuses and the the modifier here. Well, the modifier there stays the same, but the bonuses are greater. But then Felix Freslin, this agitator, is going to get the grifter trait. I don't think he's actually... It just makes him less popular. So that's not a bad thing. Like, what is... Oh, okay. You get this for two years. On this one, you get it for five. I was about to say, why would you not do this one? Okay, let's just do this one then. So 55% chance of success getting that pass now. So I'm hoping 20 is the cordial. And so when it goes down to 19, then we'll be able to, to do this play. Because I really want to capitalize on the war that's going on right now. We'll have to see. Uh, but we did get the, the labor movement unlocked. And so that's going to help us pass certain laws. So you can restrict child labor, get the regulatory bodies, wage subsidies, yeah, new laws here. You can also have another potential agitator. The minimum expected standard of living from literacy goes up and we can increase that institution investment. Okay. So we don't have the, the bureaucracy to work on the institutions right now. And we did fill that well in industry one. Wasn't really a priority for us in that journal entry. Still have the these two here going. We got them up to 10% if we wanted to go that round. And it looks like there's gonna be a war between Mexico and the United States now. So we can't see that up here though. I guess it involves the Great Plains. We don't have an interest there. We just have an interest along the coast. Another event for this law here, the art of doing nothing. And so if we welcome their support, then this character here, the agitator, gets the plus 5% interest group uh, pop attraction. Landowners get some interest group pop attraction. And then we get 10%. Enactment success chance, but I'd prefer to, prefer to go with this one so you decrease the popularity of the, the landowners. And it's only 5%, but 60% is pretty good. Should hopefully let it get that pass soon. And we do have them neutral, so it is at 20. I wasn't sure. That, that makes sense. And so now we can do the play while the British are involved in this conflict, but how much longer will they be involved? Let's just see how the war is currently going. It's going to be a, a little while. Let me just see who's all supporting this here. 
So Zovar is really just going to be Mexico against the United States, and they're looking to get all that territory. So they would, they'd be getting what they got historically. I'm not seeing anything that's missing. Yeah, looks like they're going to get all the states over here. Okay. And if Mexico wins, a very unlikely scenario, then they'll get Texas back and uh, part of Arizona. Okay. So you can see here that the Ottomans definitely are losing. They're not winning on a single front right now. They're losing against the Austrians. Uh, here in Tripoli, they're losing. And this front seems to be, surprisingly, a stalemate. It seems that you can't look at the troop numbers because, although the Ottomans actually have a lot less troops now. But yeah, the Ottomans probably have lower defense as well there. Just lower stats. I don't know why they started this play. I just, they just think the British were going to roll over. I don't know. But uh, we're going to capitalize on them doing this to do our own diplomatic play and hope that the British don't get involved. If they do, then they'll be distracted at the very least. And maybe that'll help the Ottomans. I don't know. So what we're looking to do is do the return state of Savoy. And of course, Spain will help us out. And we might go after this one too. But yeah, the key will be Savoy. All right, so we're going to start that play up. Let's go ahead and see if there's any more return states. There's not. So only Savoy would be the return state. Now, you can't just straight up conquer one. But that makes it more likely that other great powers get involved. And I'm kind of happy just getting one thing from them right now. What we'll do is if anybody gets involved and I have to fight great powers over this, then we're going to add more. But if not, then we'll be happy just taking the one state. This also makes it far more likely that they'll just give in. So that's all we're going to have now. And we'll just kind of react to the situation and see what happens here. As of right now, we could sway the Russians to get involved. Let me just take a look. We can't look at it yet. We have to get the next stage. But I wanted to see what, what they'd be willing to accept. So let's just wait until we get to that next stage and see what happens in this play. Spain declared them as a rival, because they're going to be getting involved in this. And they did add another war goal over here. Let's see. So they want us to revoke our claim on Savoy, and then they want Spanish war reparations. Since uh, they're now a rival with them. So yeah, this is our first attempt to expand here in Europe. And so far, nobody else is getting involved. The Austrians are willing to get involved. Looks like the British are still in the, the middle. I do want to see what they're willing to do. They just want an obligation from us. So if worse comes to worse, we might be able to get the Russians involved here, but not if the Austrians join the other side. It's not something to consider. Two Sicilies just sided with them. Makes sense. You got the French stepping in Italy again. <laughs> uh, trying to start up the Italian wars again. Uh, we do have uh, the political movement to enact restricted child labor. So are these all agitators in our land now? Yeah, we got two agitators here. Okay, so that's why I've been getting those events with them. I see. And I'm actually not opposed to, to doing restricted child labor. In fact, that's one of the laws we wanted to enact. And so, yeah, well, we might want to do this afterwards. 96% chance of success, and it's just the industrialists that are going to be opposed to it. Now, nobody supports it, but we can get it done simply because we have the, the political movement. Uh, very high support. So yeah, I could definitely see us doing that right after we finish this. Obviously, got to finish the current law. Yeah, let's just kind of follow along, see what happens here. Fighting two Sicilies does add to the the you know difficulty to a degree, but overall, it's still not a huge conflict. But yeah, they have between them over a hundred battalions. But we got the Spanish helping us, so. We'll wait to see how many troops we need to have raise up, but looks like we now have a rebellion. So this is our first one here. This is going to be here in Northern Africa. You know, this is them rebelling against our attempts to, uh, you know, colonize them. And so if we succeed here, we get the French colonization rights, which means we can colonize faster. And so that's something they added because what ended up happening is that these rebellions were actually negative for uh, the decentralized state uh, because they rebelled 
and then you got to beat them in one war that was super easy because they barely had any troops, if they had any at all, and then you got to completely annex them. And so it resulted in it being a good thing from the rebel because you could uh, basically colonize them really fast, you know, just in one quick war rather than waiting to do it all slowly. And so they changed this so instead of completely annexing them, you just get the colonization rights. So you don't even have any other options here. So yeah, we'll have to fight this, but it looks like it's going to be really easy. Just a few battalions here. But it can, of course, bring in other powers. We did progress to drafting. Excellent. I thought we were already in the second stage, but nope. Just now getting to that. We'll keep this going while we have the play. I wonder why that keeps uh, ticking down here. Interesting. All right, so nobody else joined. Could add another war wargle here. That does increase the chance somebody else will get involved. But I almost kind of want one more thing. We could add something against the two Sicilies. Like, for instance, we go after Sicily. Sardinia would have been an option here, but if I was to take anything, it would be to take the territory up along here. Currently, our infamy is sitting at 4.2, so it's pretty low. Yeah, this might bring other powers in. There's a real possibility Austria would get involved, and then the Russians would not want to help us out. And that would make this war far more costly and more difficult. But I feel like I want that territory as well. That put us on the border with the Austrians. So I'm really tempted to just do it anyways. Now, there are other options available to us. Could instead just do war reparations from them. That would be an option as well. And then you'll get all this infamy here that we're going to get. Because we'd have to add in both of these two. I think we're going to do it though. It's at the end here, so we'll see if anybody else is going to... To get going to hop into this. But we're going to go after all three of these. And this might just result in them giving up the primary demand now. Because you can see they're fearful here. But yeah, I think there's a good chance Austria might join now. Let's just see what happens. The Russians would not join. Because we've gotten greedy. So let's just see what happens here. Uh, we could probably go ahead and stop this as well. Uh, let's go ahead and start raising up our troops. So far, nobody else has joined. But yeah, we'll need at least some troops to, to get this done, of course. Uh, so we need to hire more generals, because as you see, we don't have very many. Uh, we have one in the France HQ uh, currently. So let's go ahead and appoint one in the France HQ. Probably want to get at somebody who's uh, not in the landowners. Somebody who's in the armed forces would be best. That's one reason why the armed forces have lost clout, is because we don't have all those generals anymore. So we got a brave commander here. He's got some good bonuses. He's also an experienced offensive planner, so he makes the most sense for us to add in here. And then we'll probably just promote him. And then we can also get one in the south here, because I don't think we currently have any generals. Nope. Okay, so yeah, let's get a general hired here as well. And so these are our two options now. We got a defensive strategist. Okay, let's go for this character. They're both armed forces. How old are these guys? 42 and 48. All right, so we're going to promote our best commanders. Uh, he's a, a popular commander here. He's a historical character. And thus he can have a higher command limit. Currently he has 32. He's got the experience offensive planner, but he's also reckless and wrathful. And so I really feel like it makes more sense for us to improve this guy. Yeah, so let's go ahead and, and promote him so he can command more troops. That gets him 40. I think that's probably good for one commander. So get him up to 40. And then there's also this commander here who currently controls only 13. So we have three generals in that region, I see. So if you promote him, then he'll get some of the ones from this guy here, I think. Because I don't think there's any... I guess we can take a look. Oh, there are. There are six available. So we can promote him as well. Because, yeah, he's better. So let's go and promote him. He's an older guy. He's not going to be around long. So that gets him up to 25, and thus he'll only have 39, and he'll only have 27. 
and then he has the 20 the 20 right there so that's probably good I think that'll be enough because they currently have let me just double check here how many they have mobilized they haven't mobilized any yet they're not taking us serious um, but we've seen that they can have 47 that's without those and then the 70 so probably need about a hundred is what I'm thinking so about a third of our, our current military force would likely be would likely be good all right so let's get those 39 there's this front here he's gonna go on this one and then we want to mobilize these 25 these 20 and these 15 and so the 15 I think will go over here it's not as important of a front and then is anybody a defensive guy no oh wait here we go this guy's defensive so we're gonna have him on the defense you can still use his battalions the other generals can and then we'll also place this guy here all right so that looks pretty good we didn't mobilize them yet this will result in them mobilizing now and they're gonna start conscription up as well we can always mobilize more if necessary the United States broke off their trade agreement due to our uh, high infamy so that's pretty typical the Ottomans have declared neutrality they got their own problems to worry about uh, Portugal declared neutrality as well so nobody else is gonna get involved in this guys so we're in the next stage here all right so this is what the war is gonna look like not bad at all and then of course we got this conflict that we're gonna have to send some troops down to as well so I just kind of follow along with that yeah they don't really have any troops so it shouldn't be too difficult war to get that wrapped up as long as nobody else gets involved there all right so just take a look they got 40 units currently raised up all right so yeah we'll see uh see if we need to bring more troops Remember we're building here as well, so that means all those generals in the French in the French HQ will get more units. Uh, but currently we have 142 here, and looks like 35 here because our allies went there. So frankly, probably didn't send enough here. We'll see. They're advancing as well. Uh, let's turn this down because we're in the middle of a of a war. I would get an event here. Whenever you start wars, you just <laughs> just want to focus on that so this would actually decrease the enactment success chance of just five percent or ten percent and uh you could instead irritate the rural folk and the landowners i see okay let's just go with this one either way you're still losing the same that same bonus that you get from the landowners because they're at 10. so two sicilies is going to begin conscription and so it does look like they're going to have a lot more troops raised up. But remember, we also have Spain. And I feel like we should be able to win this with what we currently have. If worse comes to worse, we'll just raise up more troops. But I'm trying to keep this the cost down to this. And we're advancing on the main front that matters. But let's take a look at this battle here. Um, so our side has an offense of 49. They have a defense of 34. Uh, they do have more units here, though. And we both got... The morale loss penalty from the broken supply lines we should win that and great britain did declare neutrality in this one so nobody else is going to get involved here now we do have to send troops down there it's not something to consider i don't think i have any that i can just raise up real quick let me just take a look because we had that one in the rhine hq but it doesn't look like we have a general there so let's recruit another general this one's going to be in the, the north africa hq so only one armed forces choice so we'll go with him and he'll have those 20 troops and that's who will mobilize and, and put down there and then he can help us out in this current war once he's done so like you don't need 20 units down here obviously but uh you know he just gets to finish that up real quick we got more than 20 going down there nope just the 20. i mean he could just finish that up real quick and then we could send him over to maybe to this front here where we don't have as good of an advantage all right, so here's the battle. We have 47 offense. They have 37 
defense. And we have poor visibility. Well, they have the good visibility, so they have the, the positive modifier, but we have the, the penalty here, unfortunately. And so that's why our offense is not as high as it could be. Now we're lost. That's great. So that means when we win this battle, which we will win it, we're not going to capture as many provinces, unfortunately. All right, so a bunch of rivalries are broken. I'm guessing that war's over. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Oh, maybe not. Hmm. Tripoli is now free. Tripletania is now free. So, okay. I see. So that's an interesting development, because now we could go after that territory if we wanted to. Of course, we, we got our own conflict to be worried about, but yeah, things are not going well for the Ottomans currently. All right, so we'll be able to wrap this up real quick, and that allows us to colonize that territory quicker. Also, we got nitroglycerin. I don't typically use those because, you know, I care about my people. We don't want that mortality rate increased. But we can go with this here if it makes sense to do so. Uh, so let's just take a look and see if that's going to be, like, profitable for us. And then maybe we'll, we'll switch over. Now, chilling workshops. Hmm. It feels like there's some states that might need to be switched over. Yeah, right here. So we'll get that fixed. Is there any other states? They're saying there's one more, so that's this one here. So let's go ahead and do that. Oops. Because, yeah, I noticed that that, was, that shouldn't be the way that it was. All right, so with that switched over, we're looking for the chemical plants and seeing if this is going to be profitable. It says it would not be profitable. Explosives become too cheap, and sulfur is just too expensive. Okay, so we're not going to go ahead and do that just yet. We'll have to do that a little bit later. I don't think explosives are really our problem. Like, when it came to artillery, it was just artillery was expensive. So, yeah, once this war here is done with, then we'll send those guys probably to this front. Because I feel like we got a pretty good advantage on this side. Once we win this, we'll take a few provinces over. But because of that being lost... Well, maybe not, because now they have the careful maneuver. They have the aggressive maneuver. Okay, so we're taking less casualties, less morale loss. Now we got our logistics secured. So yeah, maybe we won't uh, actually get that penalty there. But yeah, we didn't take over much. Now we can turn this up a little bit. But we do want to keep our eye on all these... All these fronts here. And there is another diplomatic play going on here. Okay, so this is over there in East Africa. So we can go ahead and declare neutrality. We don't care about that. Yeah, it looks like we're winning all, all fronts, so this one's not really making any progress here just yet. Okay, there we go. We got a little bit of territory, but not much. Uh, a novel solution. So this is, again, with the commercialized agriculture and one of our agitators here. What's interesting is that we don't seem to get messages when we have new agitators. Because, yeah, I was surprised to see that we had those two there. We just started getting events surrounding them. Anyway, canvas the public about light reading. This increases that Felix's uh, his popularity. And the armed forces will get more interest group uh, pop attraction and they'll also like us more. So that'd be good. And it's a 5% bonus to enactment success chance. Could instead do procure, uh, procure a copy with our comments to the author. So not as many good bonuses here. And you gotta pay. It's not much though. But you get a 10% rather than just the 5%. Or we say fiction should remain entertainment. And we permanently get a 5% authority bonus. Wow, that's, that's actually pretty fantastic because it's permanent. So you know what, I think that's the one we're going to do, guys, rather than just a five-year bonus. And you still get a 5% uh, increase to the success chance, so pretty good. Yeah, that's a nice one. Remember, we're still building up the troops here. And so yeah, we'll just have more and more troops out on the field, increasing our chance of success. A lot of units in this battle. We both had a blunder, apparently. And it's our general in charge this time, doing the attack here. And so our offense is much higher. But our troops, I think, were being used in that one, the, the Spanish offensive. And he's got another battle over here. We did a surprise maneuver. They're exhausted. 
They have the higher defense than us, but we have the more troops, way more troops over here. But yeah, you see the number of troops that they have on this front has been increasing. So do we have to conquer all of this? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Wow. All right. It does speed up the colonization, but again, you're not annexing it anymore, so... Yeah, I was hoping to get him over here to, to help us out so we can speed this war up a little bit. And we have moved to the third stage for commercialized agriculture. Excellent. Now the Russians are embargoing the Ottoman Empire. And the Prussians continue to expand their influence in Germany. All right, so another battle going here. We got the poor visibility, that the good visibility. They've been getting the better battle conditions, for sure. I'm actually surprised things have been going as well as they have. But I wouldn't be surprised if our casualties are a little bit higher than we'd like to see. Yeah, I mean, they have more dead than we do. And more wounded. They even have to, to pay more. The cost of the war is higher on their part as well. Okay. So, I mean, we're, we're uh, doing pretty good against the Italians. I mean, it's not really surprising there. But yeah, I was thinking with the battle conditions being what they were. But we've, we've outnumbered them. And so that's a, a huge advantage, obviously. All right, so we've almost taken over Sardinia. We got about half of the island conquered, and this war should be this uh, battle should be over soon, so it allows us to progress a little bit further. Probably not not enough to finish it up here, but so we got the same event here. Will this give us a, a double bonus? Clearly, this is broken. I wonder. I mean, if we take it again, we're we just gonna get another modifier here. Let's see. Oops, I did the wrong one. Damn it. <laughs> All right, well, that was the other one we were looking at. It's fine. Yeah, I wanted to see if we'd get the double bonus. We might have, but maybe not. So, I mean, we got the, the bonus that helped out our, uh, our preferred interest group, the armed forces. So helpful. But yeah, I was kind of curious if we could double up on that. So, so far we haven't taken much here in Italy. It's kind of hard to tell now with the way they've changed things, but yeah, we have that little bit that we got there. And it looks like we advanced a bit over here as well. Also, somebody wanted me to zoom in during the battle so you guys can see. They capitulated. Right, excellent, so that war's done. But yeah, so you guys can see us firing at each other. With our cannons. Our mighty cannons. Alright, so we got those additional troops. Also, I never did put any of uh, our ships in the sea, they're already out there, but like we didn't specify what we wanted them doing. So they're just whatever we had them already assigned to. Uh, so they're like patrolling around here, which is not even helpful. And they're patrolling over here. We could uh, be raiding their convoys though instead. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's raid the convoys right here. Could do either one of these, I suppose, but let's do this one. And we're not building anything. So obviously we need to take care of that. All right, so just taking a look at our army, we're up to the 300 battalions. We're still getting the fleet up. We should have been at 150 once they build all those ships, which again, just kind of takes time. So we still need to build more ships, but let's work on other stuff for right now. I think we spent enough on the military. So we need to get more rails going. And then the artillery obviously needs to be dealt with as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and Start with the railways. And we're just gonna look for places that have low in infrastructure for right now. So boost here. Yeah, it's kind of focused on the low infrastructure regions. So that looks pretty good. And then, that's right, we wanna go ahead and get the, improve our arms industry here. To see where we currently got that going. So they're working on improving it in Brittany. I wanted to improve regions that have the lower standard of living. So let's build here. So yeah, we'll get uh, four of those built here. You know what? Actually, it wouldn't hurt to make this really cheap and then just trade some of it off. So yeah, we'll work on a, a bit more of those. And then, yeah, nothing else is really all that bad here. Is there anything we need to trade away? No. Our market's pretty stable at the moment. Yeah, you could always improve things. Of course, we are trading for some of this here. So let's go ahead and get 
And remember, our pops are built in two, so that's really playing a large role in this. Uh, we also going to do the the dye plantations. And so with here, we're working on the places that have the best labor. So we'll build two more of those there, and then we'll also do the we'll do the tooling workshops. We know those costs are going to get higher, so it always helps to build these up. All right. So as far as where. Probably here, because yeah, I want to boost the the money they're making in this region. So we'll go up by by four there. Just trying to get the standard of living a little bit higher there. And also, you know, we're trying to urbanize. And so we want to get these urban centers up to level five. And there's still several regions that need need to go up to level five. Brittany's now nine. But yeah, you can see this is one of them. Building here would help as well. Right there, you're almost in Champagne. You're almost level five. Same thing here. So yeah, just really work on that level uh, three and four locations to get them up to level five. So we can try and urbanize here. Uh, currently, just see where we're at. We're at 42.1%. Remember, we got to get up to 75%. So it's going up. It's just slow. All right, so most got all Sardinia conquered. When this battle's done, that'll be uh, the end of that. Looks like we're also, our fleet is now engaging over here. I never did look to see who is commanding. I suppose it's fine, but... but yeah, there are some ships that aren't being commanded in the French HQ, so you could promote him if you wanted to. But yeah, we intercepted their convoy raiders here. So we finished in Sardinia. And we finished there. So we need to make sure that all of our generals are coming over to this location to advance or defend the front. So he's defending, he's advancing. Yeah, they all came over here. So now we have 211. And now the two Sicilies has capitulated because we didn't demand anything from them. I suppose we could have forced war reparations on them, but then of course you gotta get their capital and stuff. It's just easier to just let them capitulate and then easily win the war. All right, so now it's going to be a lot uh, easier for us to advance over there. And hasn't he already been helping pass this law? It says now he's ready to cross the industrialist to help pass the law. Okay, so he's ready to piss him off. I get it. Although it doesn't make any sense because the industrialists want this too. Yeah, so I'm not entirely sure uh, what they mean here. But we can welcome the change of heart. He'll get more popularity and also interest group approval. The landowners might get some bonuses because this is a, a chance that these are going to happen. That's a 50% chance the first one, 45% chance the landowners benefit, 5% chance that uh, Felix is going to be exiled. And this all gets us a 5% enactment success chance. Or we can shield Felix from the industrial uh, the industrialist's blowback. They'll lose interest group pop attraction while landowners will gain it. I guess we'll go with this one. Because, yeah, this results in all of those happening. Well, in this one, just one of those happens. So, yeah, we'll go with that. Of course, we don't know which one happened, because for whatever reason, the game doesn't tell you that. You gotta, like, dig into there to see which modifiers you got. It should be like CK3, where a little thing pops up and lets you know. Hey, this is what happened. See, so Ottomans are now trying to make a vassal in the Nile. Is that over this area here? Yeah, so they couldn't expand here. Let's say they're trying to do this. But yeah, basically the British should have gotten Wallachia now. Well, no. Maybe they're just freed. Yeah, they now have a defensive pact with Moldavia. Okay, maybe that's what happened. And because we improved the armed forces, we now have that 20%... Uh, got their approval higher. I mean, we got the 20% military technology reduction, which is nice because that's the uh, tech that we're currently working on. So that'll speed that up some. Uh, currently, we're 12 months away from getting the breach load in artillery. So this war shouldn't last much longer, guys. We outnumber them significantly now at this point. Did find some rubber. So that'll benefit us. We got the rubber rush event. Okay, we'll go with this one. But yeah, this should hopefully be done soon. Still got a, a bit left to conquer, I suppose. And hopefully we'll get this wrapped up soon so that we can uh, 
consolidate here and figure out what we're going to do next. Of course, we'll need to burn off our infamy. We already saw that the Europeans thought about getting involved in that one. I say the Europeans, of course, they were the Italians are Europeans too, but I mean the European great powers. And we got commercialized agriculture passed. All right, excellent. So that's going to greatly reduce the power of the landowners. And so they're already down 20.4% here. And the armed forces at 24.7%. Can you continue to tick down their support? All right, excellent. I almost want to boost the Catholic Church with our authority here. Uh, but I guess it reduces enactment time, and we are working on laws right now. So it makes sense for us to, to keep the authority. 5% reduction isn't much, but it helps. So we should clearly go after the restrict child labor now. Of course, that's going to irritate the industrialists. But they really like us now, after all those events that we got that benefited them. 86% chance of success. Did we lose that, that uh, guy? Nope. He's still here. Okay, uh, so yeah, let's let's work on that. So good chance of getting it done. And it's the only reason why I can pass it is because we have two agitators that support it. We got a, a, an extreme support here as well. They're now placated it because we're working on it. Yeah, this should be very quick. Should hopefully just take three, three times. Just go through it and succeed each one. All right, so we advanced here. So just waiting for the next battle to kick up here. And just taking a look. Oh, they capitulated. All right, so they gave us that territory. And so now, over oh, the French Empire as well. I think it has to do with that event that we got with the uh, cementing the rule of the Bonapartes. But yeah, we are the French Empire now. And yeah, we conquered a large part of Northern Italy here. We're up on the borders of Milan now. And Lombardy, of course, is ruled by Austria. So we have a border with Austria. So if we did find ourselves in conflict with them, we'd, we'd have a, a border to fight them on. So it could go after the rest of North Italy. That'd be a choice for the next thing. Uh, you know, obviously, we're, we're going to burn off this infamy first. Try and hope, uh, you know, maybe we'll be able to avoid more great powers getting involved. So there's that. Could fight against the Ottomans, trying to expand Greek territory here. Uh, one thing I actually want to do, I was going to make them into a protectorate, because they were willing to do it if we gave them an obligation, but that's not the case anymore, probably because of our high infamy. Um, so let's go ahead. Well, I was going to improve relations so it looks like it's high as it can be. We'll just have to wait until we burn off the infamy, and then we'll try and make them into a protectorate. But yeah, that results in more infamy that we'll have to burn off. But yeah, we've taken over this, and now... They should just be called Sardinia, right? No, they really should just be Sardinia. That's all they all they have at this point. We eventually go after that as well, since we can easily cross here and get that conquered. So I want to take that over. We have French dreams of ruling Italy are becoming closer to being completed. But yeah, we'll have to bite the Austrians for the territory here in the north. There is uh, Parma. This would be a real quick war, but their protectorate of Austria, so you gotta fight the Austrians for that as well. Okay, so those are the wars in Italy, and then there's the Belgians, which again, we'd have to fight the British if we did that, but we've been building up to fight them. So those are the, the potential European conflicts, and if we went to war at Britain, then we want to get control of their colonies here. Like, we want control of these, and then also Maybe the territories in the Caribbean would be an option as well. But let's take a look at how our stats are now that we just got control of part of North Italy. Um, so we're still number two, but GDP is now higher than the British. We now have the number two GDP in the world. We've been past the British Raj, which they're now called the British Raj. And then standard living, of course, is still below the British, but yeah, population still significantly higher. Still below the Russians, but we're catching up. Okay, so yeah, we definitely have left Russia behind in prestige. Austrians are nowhere close. Russia's got a long way to go. Americans still in the far back here, too. Which Spanish in the uh, 
in the seventh place. Anyways, I did want to, to mention uh, you know, a little controversy with this DLC uh, where, you know, some people are pretty unhappy with the patch and DLC. My thoughts. I think the patch is pretty solid. You know, it's got some good additions. It improves the game. Uh, it's got some good quality of life changes. I'm not unhappy with the patch overall, uh, the free patch, uh, but the DLC, what you pay for, there's really not a lot in there. I mentioned that in episode one. You're paying $15, or at least here in the U.S., we're paying $14.99, and I do not feel like what you're getting is worth that price. Uh, so the main mechanic is the agitators, and you get that as part of the free patch. Now, the historical agitators that we've seen in the game as we've been playing, those are part of the expansion, and those certainly add to the game, but the mechanic is part of the free patch. And so really all you're getting with the DLC is again those historical agitators and then the French stuff. And yeah, the French stuff is, is fun. It now makes uh, France to the point where I think they probably had the most unique content. I mean, uh, Ottoman Empire, the British, the US, and China, they had a good deal of, of content at launch. Not as much as you'd want, of course, and still need more. Uh, but yeah, the French did not have a lot, from my understanding. And now I feel like they're probably the, the country with the most unique content. It's still not enough, uh, honestly. But yeah, a lot of people are kind of unhappy because what this amounts to is a country pack. As it's just, uh, you know, improvements to France for $15. And, and I agree, I don't really like that model. I mean, think about it. If you're doing these country packs, uh, it, it creates a, a ton of issues. Uh, first of all... How many country packs do you need if you're doing a one, one country per country pack? I mean, that's a lot of country packs that need to be released. And at the, the current rate, I mean, it's going to take years and years and years for certain countries, uh, major countries in the game that are really important, for them to get unique content. So at least in Hearts of Iron 4, which we see how slow that development is, at least it's multiple countries that get new content. And then bringing up Hearts of Iron 4, we've seen what that creates. The original content that was released, uh, you know, not long after the launch of the game. I mean, if you look at, uh, you know, the, the content that was added for the Commonwealth and that Together for Victory DLC. Look at the quality of that compared to the quality of the content that was added in later expansions. It, it's light years away. And we've seen that throughout Hoi Vor's life cycle. That the DLCs have continued to get better and add more and more stuff and unique mechanics. Before, there wasn't really a lot of unique mechanics added to the specific countries. Uh, you, you got the focus tree, and then like they'd get uh, the new advisors and stuff like that, new characters added, you know, new flavor stuff, maybe a few new events, but they didn't get u unique mechanics. Usually, there's mechanics added in the DLC, but it was something that everybody had access to. Uh, these later uh, DLC, the more recent ones, they add unique mechanics for the countries. You know, the Soviet Union got unique mechanics. Uh, Italy got unique mechanics. And so, like, the countries that were updated in earlier expansions, they didn't get as much content. The content is not as good. It's not as high quality. There's not as much to it. And so it results in it feeling like, you know, the, the best countries are the ones that have been updated the most recently. And so you'll have that issue. What we got here with France two years from now is going to fill paltry. It's going to feel like it's nowhere near as good as, as what, let's say, Russia got in the newest expansion or whatever. And so, yeah, it's not a good model. So, yeah, I do not like this the country pack model. Uh, so I'd prefer that they not do that. We'll see how they uh, how they develop it. Uh, the next expansion is, is going to be Spears of Influence, which is going to focus on diplomacy and uh, add in certain things like you'll be able to uh, affect the economies of the country, like build in their country. Not exactly sure how that'll work, uh, but then you'll have like new subject types and new ways to influence your current subjects, and it just seems like it seems like a a good expansion. And and this is the way Paradox typically does things, and I think people have forgotten that. You got to look at some of their past games. Is generally they they release the game, it launches, and they always launch with uh, nowhere near enough content. Always kind of feeling like it lacks flavor and and lacks mechanics to keep you busy and and keep you entertained. Some games are better than others. CK3 I felt was pretty good at launch. Uh, Hoi 4 I enjoyed at launch as well. Of course it was quite unbalanced and had those problems, but I enjoyed it at launch. CK2 is another one I enjoyed at launch. 
Well, other games I hated at launch. Uh, Stellaris, a game I really like now. I didn't like it at launch. Uh, EU4, I felt like it was terrible at launch. Uh, there's a few other ones. Um, Vic Victoria 3 is one of those, though. I feel like Victoria 3 is not terrible at launch, but certainly is lacking flavor. Uh, all the countries kind of feel similar. You know, with the law system and the ability to basically go any routes with the laws fairly easily, it results in most countries playing pretty much the same, with the exception of the, the little bit of unique content that some of them got at launch. And there's not a lot. There's a few journal entries, a few events, but there's not much that makes each country feel different. So while I enjoyed uh, Victoria with the first few campaigns I played, it didn't take long for I felt like I had done everything and seen everything. And, you know, it's, it's certainly true that this update and expansion does not uh, add much beyond a French playthrough, which is why we played as France. And this patch and expansion, while I actually think the update's pretty good and does make some, some nice changes, it's certainly not enough for for you to feel like it's uh, added enough if you've already gotten sick of the launch version of the game. So uh, yeah, it's definitely disappointing for a lot of people, and I understand that. I'm just noticing here that they did not conquer Nevada here. Mexico still has Nevada, that's weird looking. I imagine the United States will take that eventually. But anyways, go back to what I was talking about here. Yeah, I definitely agree that uh, you know the, the patch is is, is fine, uh, but the, the, the expansion is, is disappointing. Uh, but again, I feel like it's it's standard for Paradox. They always do that. You know, they, they release the, the initial version of the game, the launch version of the game that's not not great, lacks flavor, and seems like a good like base for building upon the game and making something special one day after, you know, a dozen DLCs and updates and stuff. Uh, but then they, they generally will spend you know, anywhere from like six to ten months with the major updates that are free, basically fixing all the, the balance issues, often completely redoing certain mechanics that people don't like. And in many cases, th those mechanics are ones that were, were complained about in the developer diaries, and Paradox decided to ignore those complaints. Uh, we saw that with Emirata Rome. We've seen that here with Victoria 3. That many of the things they decided to fix... Legitimacy being one of those, uh, of course, the autonomous uh, building being another one. These are all things that were complained about quite a bit before the game launched, and Paradox decided to, to ignore, uh, or just wasn't able to invest in it uh, before the game actually came out. So they work on that in the free updates, and then they usually release, not always, but they usually release like a small DLC first. So, you know, in the case of you know, the most recent game uh, before Victoria, CK3, they did the Northern Lords one, which was not a, a big expansion, you know, focused on the, the Vikings of Scandinavia and adding some stuff for them, but it wasn't a huge expansion. And you see that with many of their games. They'll have like a smaller expansion for the first one, a smaller like a story pack in the case of Stellaris or, you know, uh, a country pack in the case of Victoria here, you know, something that focuses on a, a particular region, so something smaller. And then the next DLC is usually like a big major expansion. Uh, so, you know, when we talk about Stellaris, you know, that was uh, Utopia. That was their big major, first major expansion. In the case of CK3, it was Royal Court, and that was a, a really good expansion. I really liked that one. And so, generally, that's the way it works, and that seems the way it's going to work with Victoria as, as, as well, is that we're going to get the, the big major expansion, Spears of Influence, and that's not going to be until, I think it's slated for uh, Q1 2024. So it's going to be a while, guys. Now, there will be additional updates, and there's also supposed to be, like, a, a smaller DLC that's all, like, graphics and stuff. And, and that's another thing to consider is that they have, like, three different teams right now. You know, they have, like, an art team. They have, like, their coding, you know, programming team that, like, you know, actually programs mechanics and stuff. And then they have their scripting team that can script, like, unique content. This, this scripting team is the one that made this DLC. Uh, they worked with the art team to make this DLC. And so that's why you don't see the huge uh, mechanics outside of like the agitators. Uh, you know, stuff that doesn't require extensive programming. You know, it requires more like scripting. Uh, you know, so like journal entries and events and stuff like that is, is what they were able to work on. But you know, the programmers are working on the, the bigger DLC and, and working on some of, the, uh, some of the updates. So yes, the DLC is disappointing, uh, especially after the game's been out this long, but it also fits with Paradox's development cycle. Uh, and just the way they do things. Uh, so it's, it's not really surprising to me. Uh, but 
it's still disappointing. And yeah, it, it's it sucks that it takes Paradox so long to to develop for these games. I mean, you're in for the long haul, uh, years, years before you get the game to what you want it to be. You know, Stellaris didn't become what it was overnight. It took them years to get to that point. And, and again, some games are better at launch than others. CK3, I think, was a, a more solid game at launch than some of the other ones they've, they've released. But, um, you know, it just kind of depends. And, you know, we just need to be patient. It's just kind of the way Paradox does things. Uh, so, you know, while I'm disappointed uh, with the expansion, I think the, the update was still solid. And I'm looking forward to see what Paradox releases in the future. I do think that people are a little, just a little bit overreacting. And, uh, you know, all the negative reviews and stuff, you know, you feel fr free to, you know, express your opinion. But uh, is the expansion that bad? I mean, what it actually contains? Is it worth $15? No. Uh, but the French stuff is fine, I suppose. Again, it's overpriced, but I don't think it's horrible. Uh, do you review the DLC based on what it is, or do you review it based on what you wanted and that it didn't meet your expectations? Uh, but yeah, I, I'm still excited for the future of uh, Victoria, but uh, after this this series, we, we won't likely do another Victoria 3 series, because I mean, what else is there to play? We've already done three. I feel like we've experienced what, uh, what Victoria 3 has to offer for the most part, and we've done the unique stuff in the DLC. With, with the French content. So that's my opinion. Had some people ask about it, uh, asked me about it, so I feel, felt like I'd take a few minutes to, to talk about it here at the end of the episode. Uh, but hope you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you on the next one. And thanks for watching.